Greg Nathan, one stock you like in the FPA U.S. Value Fund is McKesson. Now, the stock's down around 11% this year. It's not easy being in the pharma business considering the political debate out there. So why do you want to own this drug distributor? Sure. So if you take a step back and you look at the distributors, in my view, they're kind of the babies being thrown out with the bathwater, so to speak. Uh, if you look at the reason why the industry is so out of favor, it's really from the branded side getting all that attention from raising drug prices. If you look at the distributors, uh, they get very, uh, about a third of their profits come from the branded side, two thirds come from generics. And on the brand side, it's over 80% of the business is fee for service. So when you look at the business model, uh, it's very immune from what's going on politically. McKesson, largest player in the drug distribution industry, uh, largest in the world and in the U.S. Uh, they're running the same playbook they ran in the U.S. with their acquisition of Celestio. So I believe that they'll be able to continue to uh, consolidate that industry within certain, certain parts of Europe. Um, stock's cheap it's, uh, and you know, great growth you know, for the next 10 years. All right, you're also bullish on Amerisource Bergen, staying in the drug, distri drug distributor yep. sector. Excuse me, stock's down around 18% so far this year. Very acquisitive company. Uh, also, David uh, Einhorn over at Greenlight likes him. Why do you like him? Sure. For, so for a lot of the same reasons, I like McKesson. I like Amerisource. Uh, likely, the Walgreens acquisition of Rite Aid should go through. And when that happens, you also see a nice bump. Uh, circa almost about call 10% to earnings as they fold that, uh, likely fold that Rite Aid business into their mix. Well, we'll talk about Walgreens in a second. Right now, I want to talk about CVS. Sure. Uh, that stock's, well, it's down what, 6% uh, so far this year. Yeah. Uh, tell me why you like this one, because you know, they're in PBMs, and PBMs are not popular either. Sure. So I would say if you look at that, in, that business collectively, they have uh, probably the best assets within the uh, uh, retail slash male pharmacy business. Uh, being vertically integrated is really important. Uh, they can do things that nobody else can do. So they're agnostic in terms of how a prescription gets filled, whether it's at the retail or mail side, uh, as long as they fill it. Um, they bought Omnicare uh, some years ago, a couple years ago, and uh, they essentially control the consumer uh, from the cradle to the grave, if you will. And there's very unique things that they can do that nobody else can. All right, and then finally, Walgreens Boots. Uh, they are trying to, and they probably will merge with Rite Aid. They're spinning off some stores uh, so they can pass regulatory muster. What does this mean for this company? Yeah, it increases their footprint uh, across the uh, United States. They'll have uh, over 11,000 stores um, uh, upon completion, and uh, you know, even after the divestments. The synergies are understated, in my opinion. Um, they don't talk about, uh, really, stores that they're going to proactively close down and that's a good thing and when there's overlapping stores in certain markets. Basically, they want to just keep, call it, you know, majority of the prescriptions to, a, to an existing store. They'll shut down a uh, store to close by. They'll get rid of that overhead. And it's very, it's very creative. And long term, if you think about what Walgreens is doing, they're trying to vertically integrate uh, throughout, you know, the supply chain, uh, be it in Europe as well as in the U.S. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming on and talking about those healthcare stocks. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching The Street.